Welcome to Driver D Trains. Thanks for stopping by. I'm your host, Driver D. We're joined again today by our conductor and brakeman, Scratchy C. Hey, Scratchy. I heard that people like to watch videos of trains running under the Christmas tree during the holidays. Maybe we should make one of those videos. Yes, I know Christmas was last week, but we still have the tree. No, I can't make it go in circles. Tell you what, how about we make a video showing folks the switching automation for two locomotives we'll be creating in DCC EX EX Rail in our next video. All right then, let's get switching. <coughs> Bonus switching video number two. Switching the Christmas tree in DCC EX, EX Rail. This automation features two locomotives working together to switch three freight cars from one track to another. It could easily be adapted to as many cars as we like. The automation is created in DCC EX, EX Rail, and doesn't require any special hardware on our layout. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my video series on creating automations in DCC EX, EX Rail. We'll be developing this automation together in the next video. The automation actually consists of two separate automations, one for each locomotive, that work together in tandem. These automations are also what I refer to as hybrid automations, meaning that EX Rail handles all the engineer's duties while the operator works as the switchman, manually coupling and uncoupling the cars and throwing the turnouts. Let's see how they work. The action starts with the locomotive on the lower siding. Its job is to spot the freight cars one at a time at the end of the right-hand spur. A festive red CP4405 is working the siding today, so we'll assign it the spot cars job and dispatch it to DCCEX to handle the rest. The locomotive will shove its train forward until the freight car is on the spur. Then, after we uncouple the car, the locomotive will back up on the spur to clear the turnout. That's the signal for our second locomotive to join in on the action. This locomotive, SP7623 today, is working the switch cars job and has been waiting patiently on the main for its turn. It needs to pull forward past the switch, then back onto the lower siding and grab the freight car from the spur. It then pulls out onto the main and past the turnout to the upper spur.
then it backs into the spur. It needs to slow down as it shoves the freight car around the bend. Then, once it drops its car, the locomotive can pull back onto the main and return to its holding spot. Dun dun da da dum da da dum da da dum 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 da da dum da 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 dum. Oh, what was I saying? Then the process starts over as the first locomotive spots the next freight car, and so on. Let's watch. Locomotive bells, locomotive bells, clanging all the way. Oh, what fun it is to drive a GP42 day. Hey, <coughs> excuse me. All the locomotive functions, including the lights, the horns, the bell, and the coupler sounds, are handled by the automations. The automations can also switch all the turnouts. I use manual switches on the D-Saver layout, but we'll look at how to control the turnouts when we create the automation in the next video.
after the second car has been switched, the first locomotive spots the third and final car. It then backs to the far end of the siding and shuts down. Scratchy the brakeman was a jolly furry soul With a crooked bite and a whiskered nose And two eyes yellow and gold Oh, excuse me. Finally, the last car has been switched and the second locomotive also returns to its starting spot and shuts down. Another successful delivery completed under the Christmas tree. Ho, ho, ho! What's next? Automating two locomotives with DCC EX EX Rail. In my next video, we'll develop the two automations and various sequences we just saw in action watching two locomotives working together to switch freight cars from one track to another. To do this, we'll learn some new ways to control the flow of our automations so that they take turns working in tandem. And again, we'll do this without needing to add any additional hardware to our layout. After that, we'll look at how to add a second LCD to our DCCEX command station and use that LCD to display information about our locomotives. 
Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those upcoming videos. And check this video's description for links to my other videos, including my video series on assembling a DCCES command station and my series on using JMRI's Decoder Pro app to control our trains. Until then, thanks for watching. Well, Scratchy, do you think Santa would approve? Well then, next time I'll remember to leave milk and cookies. All aboard!